Welcome in to Outkick the Show. I am your fearless leader, Clay Travis. I hope wherever you may find yourself across the entirety of this great country and even in this great world that you are having a fantastic time doing whatever it is you may enjoy doing. Uh, we have got a fun show for you lined up here today. Uh, there is an angry letter to the editor in the Nashville, Tennessean. I didn't know about this. My dad brought it to me. Uh, I got to read it to you. Um, this is remarkable. Angry uh, man, angry old man has written in to uh, complain about me to the letter to in a letter to the editor. Uh, we will discuss. Nashville is now the favorite to land the NFL draft. It would be an awesome scene downtown if Nashville gets uh, this event. The uh, Jets Preds game seven is going on tonight it's the only NBA or NHL game get lit get ready I'll be talking about that game as well and I was at Justin Timberlake last night I will give you a review of what I would call the largest gathering of drunk drunk moms in the city of Nashville's history I hope all of you are having fantastic Thursday afternoons uh, let me go ahead and tell you right now if you're going to gamble on Preds Jets tonight Make sure you go to sportsbookreview.com and get the best possible line, the best possible dollar figure anywhere in the entirety of the country. Sportsbookreview.com Also, a lot of you signing up. A lot of you signing up and I would encourage you to make sure that you make a smart financial decision and get my guy Ryan Kelly at thehomeloanexpert.com to take care of you that's Ryan Kelly thehomeloanexpert.com anywhere in the country they've got a backlog in Texas they're going to get to you all rapidly Tennessee is loaded up I'm telling you right now much to be happy about if you can save a bundle with Ryan Kelly and if you by the way have been listening to my stock picks how about WWE? I told you guys for a couple of years to buy WWE I've been continuing to tell you to do it and WWE stock on fire you know what other stock is on fire? Twitter. I hope you've been listening to me. If you have, you have gotten rich. And one more announcement. On Monday, on Monday I will officially open up signups for Outkick the Weekend in Vegas. We're going to have awesome speakers. We're going to have awesome events. It's going to be August, the, the last weekend in August before the football kicks off. The 23rd, 24th, and 25th I believe that weekend. Go ahead and book your flights it's going to be at the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino and I'm going to allow you guys to sign up starting Monday. If you are a VIP, you got preferential treatment, you got a reduced rate and a lot of you have signed up on the VIP page for Outkick the Weekend in Vegas and that is going to be officially a, a go. So save your pennies up, make some money in advance over the weekend. Uh, the get-in price is going to be 500 bucks. You get in for 500 bucks. For 600 bucks, you get three nights of hotel in Vegas plus access to all of our events. And then it goes all the way up to two grand. For two grand, you get a Thursday night dinner with me and a special guest that I guarantee you are going to enjoy. You also get a suite at the Hard Rock. So lots of stuff coming. That's going to be fun. I want to encourage you guys to go sign up. But I want to start with this. I don't know if you guys can see it. I'm going to hold it up. My dad is like the last person who still subscribes to the Nashville Tennessean. Here is the headline. Clay Travis, I swear to God, this is the lead letter to the editor yesterday in the Nashville, uh, Nashville Tennessean. Clay Travis owes Vince Young an apology. This is real life. Clay Travis owes Vince Young an apology. This is pretty unbelievable. All right? This is incredible. I'm going to read this to you now. All right? Are you ready? Old man gets mad at the heavens, shakes fist, writes a letter to the editor. And what's funny about this, this is the letter to the editor. I owe an apology to Vince Young, according to this writer. Uh, what is amazing about this, uh, about this in general, is nobody told me about this. Like, this was on the editorial page, the letter to the editor page. Uh, my dad comes in yesterday and he's like, well, I bet you got a lot of feedback, didn't you? And I'm like... About what, Dad? Like, I get feedback literally all day long, every day. Did you see that I ranked the presidents 1-7 to seven yesterday? My mentions are a perpetual war zone. He said, well, there was a letter to the editor uh, about you owing an apology to Vince Young. And I was like, oh my God, I've got to see this. So this is real life. This is the Nashville, Tennessee, and yesterday an old man wrote a letter to the editor telling me that I needed to apologize 
to Vince Young. The headline is, Clay Travis owes Vince Young an apology. Are you ready for this? Uh, and by the way, the guy who wrote this is from Portland, Oregon. So I want you to think about this for a minute. The scope of OutKick has become so substantial. All right, We have such a massive audience now that random old dudes in Portland, Oregon are listening to the OutKick the Coverage radio show are becoming outraged about things that I say on the OutKick the Coverage radio show and their first thought is that they need to write a letter to the editor in Nashville, Tennessee. So guy in Portland, Oregon hears OutKick the Coverage, my radio show. I'm guessing, because this is where we did this. And then he decides that he's going to write a letter to the editor to complain about what I said about Vince Young nearly two weeks after it happened. Okay? Uh, it might be Shannon Sharp. That's not a bad theory. Here's the read. Here's the letter to the editor. Controversial broadcaster Clay Travis pushes the envelope on his show, which is a sign of the times for sports talk radio. Where do I push the envelope? Really, I, I love that I'm considered both controversial and an envelope pusher. We did a fucking hour on which is better, peanut butter or jelly the other day. I don't even understand why I'm considered controversial. I don't even understand how I'm considered to be pushing the envelope. That's the opening sentence. We did an hour on which was fucking better, peanut butter or jelly, all right? By the way, it's fucking jelly. Uh, which is the t sign of the times for sports talk radio. However, in my opinion, he recently crossed the line when it comes to his treatment of former Tennessee Titans quarterback Vince Young. During the NFL draft, Young mispronounced the name of Titans draftee Harold Landry as Honor Landry, and Travis basically crucified him for it, playing the tape over and over. Travis also played tapes of NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell butchering Marcus Mariota's name, as well as John Travolta messing up at the Oscars. However, he did not call into question their intelligence as he did with Vince Young. Oh, oh, boom, race card being played in the letter to the fucking editors, boys and girls. Travis even made a point to share Young's comparatively lower hashtag wonder, uh, quote unquote Wonderlick score. I don't know why Wonderlick score is in quotations, but by the way, the motherfucker misspelled Wonderlick. I don't know. If you want to criticize me for being uh, too unfair, you might want to spell Wonderlick correctly as opposed to incorrectly in your motherfucking letter to the editor, loser with his listening audience, and the implication was that Young is both illiterate and ignorant. That's not the implication, all right? The implication is not that Vince Young is, quote, illiterate and ignorant. I believe that Vince Young is illiterate and ignorant. I want to make it clear. I was not implying that Vince Young was illiterate and ignorant. I was straight up saying that I'm not sure if Vince Young can read and that I don't believe he's very smart. I want to make it sure clear that was not an implication on my part. That was a direct accusation. If Vince Young wants to fire back, he's welcome to come on the show and we will give him an 8th grade spelling test and he will bomb in uproarious and ridiculous and hysterical fashion. So, just putting that out there. And this isn't the first time Travis has singled out an African American on draft day. Uh-oh! Boom! Race card right there on the table. How dare... I talk about a black man on draft day. I don't know about you. I don't know about you. It's definitely racist of me to talk about a black man on draft day. Hardly any black men getting drafted at all in the NFL and the NBA. How dare, how dare I talk about a black man on draft day. The day after the 2017 NFL draft, this is where it's also great. The dude is, what I have found is the people who hate me listen the most obsessively. So they go back and they're like, remember, this is so he's going back now. He's been listening for over, I'm so offensive, he's been listening for over a year. The day after the 2017 NFL draft, Travis went after Atlanta Falcons draft pick Tack McKinley, who brought a framed photo of his grandmother on stage. During that ceremony, an emotional, teary-eyed McKinley inadvertently uttered a profane word which was censored from the broadcast. But that didn't stop Travis from pouncing on the young man and making a spectacle of him throughout his show the next day. Yeah, I think Tack McKinley's also an idiot. I think if you're a grown man and you carry a Glamour Shots photo of your dead grandma on the stage after you get drafted and then say you're going to get to the goddamn quarterback while holding a picture of your dead grandmother, I think you're an idiot. All right? Period. I don't care what race you are. Uh, so what's up with Clay Travis? Oh, got the lingo down. Got the lingo down. Just like the kids talk. What is up, he said. What is up, he said, with Clay Travis? 
He didn't call into question Roger Goodell's intelligence. If Roger Goodell had scored a six on the Wonderlick, I would have called into account Roger Goodell's intelligence. And by the way, I have ripped Roger Goodell to the high heavens on the show. He didn't do that to Travolta either. Uh, I don't know how dumb Roger, uh, John Travolta is, but we crushed him for being unable to pronounce Adina Manzel's name. No, Ole Young was singled out for being ignorant. Personally, I found that to be extremely offensive. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh, this dude from Portland, Oregon was extremely offended, guys. The extremely offended bell has been pushed. The race card has been played. Oh my God, it's left-wing moral superiority brought to bear on Vince Young's idiocy. Personally, I found that to be extremely offensive. I believe Travis owes Vince Young and the University of Texas where Young works an apology. All right, here's the deal. Here's the deal. You know me, always reaching across the aisle, always trying to make friends, always trying to make sure that I never offend anybody and that every word that I say is universally beloved. So with that in mind, I want to extend an olive branch. I want to reach across the Wonderlick aisle where Vince Young got a six and I would probably score perfect. But that's not because I'm white and he's black. It's because I'm smart and he's dumb. I am going to offer Vince Young an olive branch here. I will allow Vince Young to come on the show. If Vince Young can come on the show, and by the way, for those of you who just tuned in, this is a letter to the editor I was reading. Somebody wrote from Portland, Oregon, a letter to the editor to the Nashville Tennessean complaining that I was racist because I said Vince Young was dumb. Um, because only the only way Vince Young can be possibly considered to be dumb is it's his race that makes him dumb, according to this person. Not the fact that Vince Young is dumb. It's because he's black that he's dumb, which is kind of racist to think that you would think that because of his race, I'm ridiculing him. If you listen to the show regularly, I don't play favorites very often. I ridicule everybody. But I am going to tell you this. And by the way, if you didn't hear it, this is because Vince Young couldn't read the name Harold Landry. I'm going to tell you this right now. I will extend an offer to Vince Young. He can come on the radio show. If he can successfully make an 85% out of 100 on a spelling test featuring... High school level spoiling words, but not high level high school. We'll say 8th grade. If he can successfully get a B on 8th grade spelling test, then I will apologize to Vince Young and I will allow it to be known that I think that Vince Young is one of the smartest quarterbacks in the history of either college or the NFL. Vince Young, 8th grade spelling test, live on air, if he can get a B or better, 85%, 85% was what I remember back in the day being roughly like the cutoff between B and C. If he can get an 85% on an 8th grade spelling test, live, we need a witness to make sure he's not looking up words, I will give it to him live on air, and on top of that, if he can get an 85% or better, I will give him $10,000 in his name, donated to the University of Texas Scholarship Fund. Challenge to VY, 8th grade spelling test to redeem himself over the Harold Landy, Landry debacle, uh, and also debacle, 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 and that's probably how Vince Young will spell it, debacle, and also will get an opportunity to once and for all put away the hindrance that is hung around on his shoulders like an albatross, that he got a 6 on the Wonderlick. 8th grade spelling test. I pick the words, but I will find an 8th grade teacher who will provide me those words. If VY can get an 85% or better live on the air, I will donate $10,000 to the University of Texas Scholarship Foundation in his name, and I will apologize. Debarkle. It'll be a debarkle. <laughs> uh, it's diabolical. It's debarkle. But anyway, this is amazing. We're going to have to talk about this tomorrow on the show. Tomorrow on the radio show, we're going to open up phone lines. I'm telling you right now, I don't know if you're listening to the Outkick the Coverage radio show, but again, the lead editorial in the Nashville, Tennessean, an Outkick the Coverage listener in Portland, Oregon, an old man, wrote a letter to the editor to the Nashville, Tennessean uh, newspaper. The only way I even knew this happened. Think about how many people follow me on Twitter. The only way I knew this even happened was because my dad brought it over. My dad is 74. He reads the newspaper. He reads... <laughs> 
<laughs> he reads the letters to the editor, and when he opened up the newspaper, he saw Clay Travis owes Vince Young an apology as the main uh, letter to the editor uh, at the Nashville Tennessean, uh, this, uh, this newspaper that nobody reads except for my dad. By the way, I pay for my dad's subscription, and I pay for three newspapers. I pay for the Nashville Tennessean, I pay for the New York Times, I pay for the Wall Street Journal. Uh, this is remarkable. This is uh, remarkable uh, if, uh, if this is uh, anything else. All right, so we will play all those audios, uh, all that audio clip again tomorrow. I'm encouraging you to pay attention to it. All right, Adam Schefter has reported that Nashville uh, is now in uh, the running, in the lead to host the NFL draft. This is phenomenal. Uh, Adam Schefter tweeted out a couple of hours ago that Nashville was now the leader for uh, to be able to host the NFL draft. I thought this was a great bit of news. I hope it ends up happening. I think Nashville would do an incredible job. This would be fantastic for the city of Nashville. That news is out there. Again, Adam Schefter hopping on the Twitter machine and tweeting that out a couple of hours ago. Fingers crossed that that could end up happening. Super Bowl is the next step. Got to tear down this uh, the, the stadium downtown, build a dome, host the Super Bowl. I think it'll happen in my lifetime. All right. Preds-Jets Game 7 is going on tonight. Preds-Jets Game 7, only NBA or NHL game that's taking place. And by the way, before I get to Preds-Jets, I was intrigued by this. Who are you guys rooting for? Uh, who are you guys rooting for now that the Final Four in the NBA is set? We've got the Celtics, Cavs, Warriors, and Rockets. So I put out a poll question this morning. I love to see the poll question. I love to see the poll questions and see what you guys are going to respond. 25,000 of you voted. And the Celtics and the Cavs are tied at 30%. You guys can vote right here in the comments as well who you're rooting for. Celtics and Cavs and guy who hates the NBA is obsessed with telling me that he hates the NBA. Every time I poll any question... Guy who hates the sport that's being polled feels compelled to jump into the comment section and say, I hate the NBA. The NBA sucks. When does football start? Or if I ask an NFL question, they're like, I'm not watching. I hate the NFL. Bunch of pansies. I love the obsession with telling me that you don't care about the poll. The poll is designed to poll people who do care. I don't understand why you feel the obsession to hop in and be like, oh, I hate the NBA. Hockey sucks. I don't know why anybody watches. Like, okay, if you don't like it, then don't watch it. And don't vote in the poll. 30% of the Celtics, 30% have the Cavs, 23% have the Rockets, and 17% have the Warriors. All right, that is the breakdown. Nearly 25,000 votes so far. Celtics, Cavs at 30%, Rockets at 23%, Warriors at 17%. Uh, and I thought maybe it was going to be East Coast biased. It's possible that I have more followers from the East Coast than I do the West Coast. Uh, and I thought also maybe people weren't awake. But I think the Warriors are underrated in terms of how much hate they provoke. And I think most of that hate comes from Draymond Green and then the decision by Kevin Durant to decide to go uh, and join the Golden State Warriors and basically kill all the suspense when it comes to the NBA regular season. So uh, that is uh, that is out there. Game 7 tonight. I can't wait. Game 7 going on. i got to go coach Little League Baseball or else I would be at Game 7. My 7-year-old is playing a Little League Baseball game that starts at 6.15. So I will start the game a little bit late. i got to go coach uh, Little League Baseball. And then my whole crew is going to be watching. I'm all in on Game 7. Preds against Winnipeg. I hope we can break Canada's heart in the city of Nashville and advance to play Las Vegas in what would be a epic Western Conference Final. And uh, I said it before, uh, for a long time, I thought NHL playoffs, this awesome guy, was a loser. I ridiculed him on my radio show. I was not willing to buy in. I'm now with you. The NHL playoffs are infinitely better than the NBA playoffs. In terms of sheer enjoyment, the NHL playoffs are a lot more competitive. Any team can win. Anything can happen. The NHL playoffs are better than the NBA playoffs. And I say that as a guy who's played basketball his entire life and has never once in his life ever even contemplated playing in a hockey game. I have no idea what's going on from one moment to the next on the NHL. But it's a better product. It's a more entertaining television show. It's just better all around. The NBA just finished its second round. We had a sweep and we had three second round games. Most people are not smart enough to think about this. But you guys should be because I'm going to tell you about it. 
A lot of people out there talking about NBA ratings and they're all like just praising the NBA ratings. The NBA ratings are not very good relative to what ESPN and TNT have paid for the NBA. And they're even worse if you consider how uncompetitive the NBA is right now. Because most of your money is made on games 6 and 7 in series. In the second round of the NBA playoffs, there wasn't even a single game 6 and there wasn't a single game 7. The second round of the NBA can be as few as 16 games and as many as 28, right? You could have four seven-game series or you could have four sweeps. There were 19 games in the second round of the NBA playoffs. Only three games were won by the teams that ended up losing the series. That's bad. ESPN is losing hundreds of millions of dollars every single year on the NBA. And I don't think most people are even recognizing that or noticing it. So, I cannot wait to watch uh, Jets-Perez Game 7 tonight. Now, last night I went to Justin Timberlake. Took my wife to Justin Timberlake. uh, 70% female, 75% female maybe inside of that arena. Uh, I did not realize how many drunk moms were going to be there. This was Drunk Mom Central, Central, Milf Haven indeed. It was wild how many people were out there. And as a result, I got to tell you, Chris Stapleton came out and performed. I put up a video uh, of Chris Stapleton performing. Uh, I'd like to thank the guys at uh, Two Rivers Ford who let me uh, watch it with my wife from their suite, John Barker and crew. Also want to thank Regions. Your boy's getting hooked up a lot. Also want to thank Regions for letting us come in and Regions Bank and watch the, uh, watch the Foo Fighters on Friday night the weekend before. I, it's, it's amazing to me and this is great. The more money I have, the less I have to pay for. I've been telling you, I've told you this before. I've been poor in my life. There have been times when I had virtually no money. Nobody gave me anything free then. Then I got rich and now people just give me free stuff all the time. It's like once you get to a certain level, people just start trying to give you as much free stuff as you can possibly take. I I don't even, I don't even understand how it happened, but I can check my email right now and it'll be somebody trying to get me to travel to some part of the country or even some part of the world for free with my family And it's crazy. It's wild. And I imagine that it's like that for a lot of people who suddenly, quote unquote, make it, whatever that means. Uh, But it's awesome. And so I want to thank Regents Tours for it. We had an awesome time. And uh, Justin Timberlake was flat out amazing. All right? Justin Timberlake was, uh, I thought the Foo Foo Fighters were great too. But Timberlake's an incredible entertainer. Um, And we moved out to Franklin a couple of years ago. And Justin Timberlake lives like just down the road from us here in Franklin. And uh, I I think he's an incredible representative for the city of Nashville. I've been arguing for a while that he and I need to go out and play golf. Um, But there was a lot of sex had in the city of Nashville because of Justin Timberlake. And what I love about Justin Timberlake is all the women who go to Justin Timberlake dress like they're actually going out on a date with Justin Timberlake. I've never seen anything like it. With the amount of women dressed up. Like my wife was wearing shoes that were so uncomfortable she had to take them off to walk back to our car after the concert. They were great looking shoes. She looked fantastic in them. But she was just going with me. She was not going out on a date with Justin Timberlake. And she took them off and walked down Broadway barefoot because her shoes were hurting too much. And there were women all over Broadway doing the same thing. Dressing in shoes that were really fancy as if they were going to be going out with Justin Timberlake. I mean, it's unbelievable to me. And this is, of course, a lesson in life in general. Women don't dress for men. They dress for other women. When men show up at events, by and large, if it's just men, it's a bunch of blue jeans, it's a bunch of tennis shoes, it's a bunch of t-shirts. Like, what did I wear to the Timberlake concert? I wore a t-shirt, I wore jeans. And I got to tell you this. I have made a recent addition to my wardrobe. I don't know if this is controversial or not. I have no idea what's cool anymore because I'm a 39-year-old dad. I've gone with boots. I don't know about you guys. How many of you guys wear boots? I did not wear a belt. I'm not a fucking savage. I wore boots. And I'm back in love with boots. Back when the day during Dukes of Hazzard when I was a kid, I used to wear boots all the time. I would wear boots with shorts in in kindergarten because I was such a fan of Bo and Luke Duke. I've got legit cowboy boots. They are phenomenal. Boots and blue jeans, solid play. They work as dress shoes. This has revolutionized. This has revolutionized my fashion wardrobe. I wear flip-flops or I wear boots. That's pretty much it. 
That's pretty much all I wear all the time. It has revolutionized my wardrobe. Now, I know a lot of women for a while. I'm not sure if this is still really popular. In Nashville would go sundress boots and it was incredibly hot. I'm telling you, I'm six foot, 184, 185. I'm down. I, was, I got up to 195. My wife put me on a, on, a, on a diet. But I feel like I'm like six foot five when I wear boots. First of all, I don't know how much the heel difference makes. But I feel like I'm like 6'5". I feel like I can dunk a basketball in these boots. I'm just staring over the top of everybody's heads. And all I got to do is slip them on. The boot is the shoe of choice. It should be, in my opinion, for guys who like flip-flops because there's virtually no work involved. You just slide them right on just like you would slide a, fo a football in. I've got Tacovas. I believe they're called Tacovas. Again, another advantage. I've invested in my friend uh, Justin Ishbia. He's a brilliant guy from my law school class, has got a private equity fund, and one of the guys who's involved in the private equity fund, of course, has his own boot company, and I got these Mexican leather boots. He's like, hey, you think you would like boots? I'm like, sure, I'll try them, and I absolutely love them. I absolutely love these boots. I mean, they feel, my foot feels like it's being made love to all the time. The leather is so tender and sensuous on my foot, it's amazing. It is absolutely amazing. Uh, you need to look into these boots. So anyway, I go boots, I go jeans, I go t-shirt. That's my standard concert outfit. Everywhere I looked around, guys were dressed totally normally, and then they were with women who looked like they were going out on a date with Justin Timberlake. Drunk moms stumbling around everywhere, hoping that Justin Timberlake is going to bang them. Now, we got asked a question the first hour of the show. My guy Lance Taylor came on and said, ask the question. That was a good question. What percentage of women who were at that concert would have sex with Justin Timberlake? And for men, we think it's like 100% because we think like men. For instance, the number of straight men who were at a Katy Perry concert and would have sex with her backstage if she wanted to have sex with them is 100%. All right? If you are watching this right now and you are a woman and you go talk to your husband or your boyfriend and you say, hey, Clay Travis said earlier on his show that 100% of men would have sex with Katy Perry backstage if they had the ability to do it. Um, the answer is 100%. Now they'll lie. Say, oh, I never sleep with anybody else. Never sleep with anybody else, baby. If Katy Perry threw themselves at your husband and nobody else was going to know, they would sleep with Katy Perry. All right? And frankly, I don't even think the women should be upset. I don't think you should be upset. It's not a threat. Katy Perry is a better... Well, before Katy Perry's haircut, she was a much better catch than anybody out there watching this show right now. And you should be honored that Katy Perry wants to bang your husband. I feel kind of the same way about Justin Timberlake. I wouldn't mind. If my wife wanted to sleep with Justin Timberlake, I'd be like, whatever. I don't think he's going to leave Jessica Biel for, Je for my wife, and I wouldn't be that offended by it. I think it would be a good story. Some people out there are so possessive. They're like, oh my God, this is unacceptable. I don't know. I think I wouldn't mind being able to brag, you know, my wife is so hot that Justin Timberlake wanted to bang her. People be like, you know, I kind of see that. I just don't really care. Like, if Justin Timberlake's going to leave his wife for Jessica for my wife, eh, so what? You know? And so I think my wife should have the same theory. If Katy Perry wanted to bang me, she should be honored. She should be honored. If Katy Perry showed up at our front door and she was like, you know who I love? And I mean Katy Perry with good hair. If she showed up at my house and knocked on the door, my wife opened the door and she was like, you know what? I just think your husband's periscopes are so hot. I think that his Facebook live show is so hot. Like, I don't even wear pants while I watch him talk about sports and Donald Trump and whether peanut butter or jelly is better. There's nothing hotter than your husband talking about letters to the editor to the Nashville Tennessean about whether or not Vince Young is dumb. I want to bang him so bad. I think my wife would be like, okay, I, I get it. Now, my wife wouldn't agree with any of that, but I think my wife would be obligated if Katy Perry knocked on the door with the good hair. Katy Perry with the good hair before she was psycho and went social justice warrior. Hot Katy Perry. I think she would have to be like, okay, I get it. That makes total sense. Um, and I kind of feel the same way about Justin Timberlake. Like, it's like, okay, he has, like, prime and octa over everybody. And I don't even wear a jersey like all you losers out there who, uh, who wear the jerseys of everybody. Um, but am I going to keep my boots on is a great question. Maybe so. Maybe so. Maybe I would keep the boots on. Might get better leverage that way. Might get better leverage. Don't want to fall in. Might have to hold on. Don't know what the deal is going to be with Katy Perry. Um, all right. Uh, good hair Katy would love me. Good hair Katy would love me. Old hair, new hair Katie, I'm not interested in her. New hair Katie has the same haircut as me. I'll tell you this right now. I'm on the record as saying this. I will never be attracted to a woman with short hair. I've never seen a woman in my life with short hair and thought, that's a really attractive woman. I'm telling you right now. Katie Perry has the same haircut as me right now. Not going to be interested in her. Long hair Katie Perry, 
Long hair, I did care. Long hair, Katy Perry, I care. Not going to happen now. Um, kissed, a, kissed a girl, Katy Perry, phenomenal. Before she got married to, uh, to uh, who'd she get married to? Uh, the dude, uh, dude, uh, what's his name? If you are a woman and you're watching this right now, women out there sometimes think, you know it would be cute if I had short hair. You're wrong. There has never been a woman with short hair who looked better than a woman with long hair. I'm just telling you this right now. And if a man likes you with short hair better than he liked you with long hair, he's probably gay and pretending that you are a man. I'm just telling you, if a man likes you with short hair more than he liked you with long hair, He's probably gay and pretending that you are a man. I'm just telling you right now. Take it to heart, women. Don't cut your hair. Samson got his hair cut. You saw what happened to him, right? Delilah, done for. Don't ever cut your hair short. Long hair guy. I'm not a long hair guy. There's some women who like long hair guy. It's, it's not a good move, I don't think, for an older man to have long hair. Now, I've had long hair before. I had hair in my shoulders. These are just truths. I'm trying to make your life better, women. Listen, don't ever cut your hair. Just telling you this right now. My name is Clay Travis. This has been Outkick the Show. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Much to discuss. Go to sportsbookreview.com. Get your bets in for Game 7 between Jets and, uh, Jets and Preds. I'll be watching. I hope you guys will as well. Only really big sporting event going on tonight. And I want to tell you, go get your mortgage with my guy Ryan Kelly at thehomeloanexpert.com. This has been Outkick the Show. Kisses. d boys and girls. See you all tomorrow. See ya. Bye-bye.